down Come. who's at the door baby who's that what? 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 who's that who's at the door oh no wait someone's there <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Julia. I'm Stefan. And this video is going to be a little bit different. This video is all about the pros and cons of owning an Italian Greyhound. This is our Italian Greyhound Bambi. We've had her for 12 years and so she's a little senior doggy now. And um, we had originally wanted to wait to make this video until our channel grew a bit more and until people actually wanted a video about our dog Bambi. But we found out a couple weeks ago when Bambi got quite sick that um, while she has a large mass in her chest, I'm gonna let her go. <laughs> She has something in her chest. The vets are not entirely sure what it is. I'll put the x-ray on the screen, but yeah, basically it's very big for her size. She's a small dog, but it's about four centimeters wide, uh, which is obviously very concerning. And so we do not know exactly what it is yet, but we, we have to you know, be realistic and she is 12 years old. So we don't know how much more time we are going to have with her. It could be a couple more years if it's like a benign mass that doesn't grow bigger, uh, or you know, we might only have a few more months. So uh, that is why we decided to make this video now while we still have our beautiful Bambi with us. And so without further ado, let's get into our story of purchasing Bambi and some of the pros and cons of owning an Italian Greyhound. Let's do this. So I got Bambi 12 years ago from a breeder and at the time we weren't sure whether to get Faye, her sister, or to get Bambi, whose name at the time was Capri. I'll put a picture here of her parents. Her father was named Christopher, he's the orange one, and her mom was named Sunny. You know, it's hilarious. That picture looks like one of the early 18th century pictures of your parents <laughs> in a weird Polaroid or something like that. The <laughs> son Christopher and his wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is an old picture. I actually don't know if her parents are alive anymore. Um, it's been a couple of years since we last contacted the breeder, but um, probably not, sadly. But we, you know, we're really glad we went with this breeder. We love Bambi, we love raising her, and we've had her for the last 12 years. So without further ado, let's get into the pros and cons of what it's actually like to own an Italian Greyhound. We're gonna talk about five pros. The first pro, it's her size. She's a very small dog, makes her convenient for apartments. Now, although they're taller, than regular small dogs. Uh, they only weigh about uh, eight to 10 pounds. The second pro we wanna talk about of owning an Italian Greyhound is how affectionate and loyal they are. Bambi loves to give hugs and is extremely attached to me as her mommy. This is pretty typical of the Italian Greyhound breed. They're not super affectionate with all strangers like a golden retriever might be. They tend to really love their people specifically. Number three, contrary to what some might think, they don't actually require that much exercise. They don't require these nice big long walks, but they are capable of them. Um, she's very good at sprinting. Her full tilt sprint can be as fast as a full size dog's uh, sprint as well. It's very impressive. Uh, she does her zoomies inside the house and uh, in general, big couch potato dog, sleeps for like 14 hours and is very, very active for maybe two. <laughs> it's true, she sleeps almost the entire day. Number four, they do not have much grooming requirements. The only regular grooming that Bambi needs is clipping her nails every four to six weeks. We don't even have to clean out her ears and she's never had an ear infection. So in terms of that maintenance, it's very minimal. Easy dog to have. Pro number five, they're actually very suitable for people with dog allergies. For example, uh, Julia's father is uh, he's allergic to dogs. And even though this breed is not 100% hypoallergenic, because uh, someone who's severely allergic will still feel the side effects. Your father, I think, uh, had no, uh, he had no problems he tolerating baby. Yeah. yeah, he never reacted. They barely shed at all, and they produce almost no dander, which is typically what most people are allergic to, is the saliva of the dog or the dander of the dog. And so generally, just they don't cause allergies. I've actually never met anyone who's been allergic to Bambi, even people who are allergic to some other animals. Correct. A few tricks from our beloved Bambi. Okay, um, Bambi, Spin. High five. Other bra. Good girl. Bambi around. Bambi bow. Good girl. Jules, how shall, shall, how even the, the cats will sit if you ask them to? Oh yeah, that's true. They will. Charlie, sit. <laughs> I'll be sit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alrighty, now let's get into the five cons of owning an Italian Greyhound. That's right. It's not all sunshine and rainbows with this dog. As much as we've loved Bambi and we've loved owning her the last 12 years, we do have to admit there are some cons to owning an Italian Greyhound that you're going to want to be prepared for if you think this breed is one you want to join your family. Con number one, they got very fragile bones and a delicate structure. So their bones, especially in the first year of their life, are very, very brittle. And the dog is very tall and skinny and they're very prone to bone breaks, which is extremely inconvenient. It's uh, very tragic when it happens and let's be frank, extremely expensive. Luckily, we've had no issue with Bambi uh, for that ever happening, but we are part of Facebook groups. We are part of Italian Greyhound owners uh, Facebook groups and almost every week we see someone with a, a horrible story about how one of their uh, one of their dogs broke their legs or something like that. Yeah, it's extremely common. So you, if you're getting this dog, you'll want to get insurance or put aside many thousands of dollars in savings in case uh, your dog does sustain a fracture. There's also a higher risk as your dog becomes senior um, of the bones becoming brittle again and then potentially getting injured in their older years too. So this is not a working breed. This is clearly a small, comfy apartment dog, not for rugged uh, environments. Yeah. Number two, they are extremely sensitive and intolerant to cold or wet or any kind of weather that's not perfect basically. Uh, if you're living in the south or in a warm climate, this could actually be a great breed for you. But for us in Canada, where we have snow for many months during the year, this is a huge con. This means that she cannot go outside for large parts of the year because it's too cold or too wet or both. And so what that means practically is that she is still on pee pads at 12 years old. During the winter months, she can't pee outside, it is too cold, so she uses pee pads. But what that means is in the summer, she also doesn't understand why she only needs to go outside. She will go outside in the summer uh, on walks or in the backyard, but she doesn't understand why she can't also go inside because she's been doing that most of the year anyway. So in practice, if you have an Italian Greyhound, they're gonna be peeing on pee pads indoors all the time. I do know some Italian Greyhound owners uh, in the Facebook group that we're part of, which have built like a tunnel system to an outdoor sheltered area that is even somewhat heated, that's out of the elements where their dog can go potty. That is another option. There's, yes, very, very intricate uh, ways of getting your dog to go outside. Basically where we are, Bambi doesn't go outside from mid-October all the way down to April, right? So the, the animal does originate from the Middle East era areas. You know, it, it's made for a desert. It's not made for where we are. So inside dog. Yeah, and what that means as well is that you have to find other ways to stimulate your dog. You know, you can't just go on a 15 minute walk. And so throughout the winter months, we do trick training. We take Bambi on a lot of car rides uh, to my parents' house, to my sister's place, or to his family's homes. I did agility with her in the winter months once a week. Uh, we did several years of that over the winter months uh, just to do anything with her to keep her stimulated and happy because they still need to get that physical mental stimulation. We also go to indoor meetups with other Italian Greyhound groups, whatever we can to give her that physical mental stimulation. You have to get creative because a walk is just not gonna work. It's gotten easier as she's gotten older, she's less requiring to, uh, to go out and do things. Exactly. Now at 12 years old, she just wants to sleep all the time. And we still take her on weekly outings to different places, but we don't have to be as diligent about doing something with her every single day. She just doesn't have the energy anymore. That's right. Con number three, and this one's a big one, they're actually prone to excessive barking. Now, when Julia moved out of her parents' house to move together and our cohabitation in the first home, she had a high anxiety, high separation anxiety, rather. It, it is a very anxious dog. Um, she's extremely territorial and nervous about anything that walks by the window or at the front door. And especially in our first suburban home, she was barking all day long if we were at work or not with her in that room. Uh, this caused problems. Uh, the neighbors complained. Um, you know, we had less of a problem when we moved here to her property. Um, she's much older now. Now she's 12 years old. She's not as interested, even though she is still very anxious. Uh, but yeah, just a reminder, this dog has a lot of anxiety, which can lead to a lot of fear-based barking. And the bark is actually surprisingly loud. It's a loud, high-pitched, can't think go over your head uh, kind of bark. So. Yeah, some people, when they hear just the bark and they don't see her, they assume she's a big dog. She doesn't have a tiny yappy bark like some small breeds do. It's quite, it can be quite frightening if you don't see her. Bambi, who's that? <laughs> Bambi, who's that? Come here, Bambi. Who's that? Who's that? And you know, this only became an issue when we moved. 
So for the first couple years, she was practically mute. I didn't even know if she could bark. And then once we moved into that, that home together, um, that change, that move really triggered her anxiety. And for a few months, it was really difficult. She barked a lot, but that thankfully subsided. So she is a sight hound too. Some of the techniques we found out was just to close, we had to get blinds everywhere. She just couldn't see. If she didn't see it, she didn't bark unless it was right at the door. They're very visual as a sight hound. So if you can block the visual cue of people walking by or dogs walking by, which is what triggered her anxiety and her barking, then she would really, really calm down. We also did things like playing calm nature sounds. We'd always give her a treat or a chew before we left the house to make our departure a positive experience. When we came home, we would just be calm. We wouldn't make it all exciting. Uh, just to reinforce that us coming back is not this huge, exciting thing. It's just normal and boring. And that, that over time did help. Um, I think that the blinds were the most effective though with her being a sight hound, not being able to see those, making her scared really, really helped. Number four, they are prone to dental problems. Bambi at eight years old had 11 teeth removed and this was a very expensive procedure. And that was despite the fact that we were brushing her teeth a couple times a week. We were giving her a dental chew every single day for her whole life. And still she had to have this really expensive procedure done. And so it's pretty much expected that your Italian greyhound will need to have teeth removed every time greyhound we know as they get older have teeth removed so this is another thing you'll want to budget for if you are thinking of putting bringing an italian greyhound into your family because some dogs you can really get away with doing very low maintenance in that area stay on top of the italian greyhound check on her keeps condition regular cleaning uh, it was yeah it's it's not something you can just forget about with this breed it is a problem it's a common problem for this breed okay con number five italian greyhounds may not be suitable for families with young children now don't get me wrong she loves our nephews and nieces when they come over uh, but they have to be very respectful this dog is very sensitive they're skin sensitive they don't like to be poked when they're down and they do tend to yap and snap the children bring a certain energy that the italian greyhound just gets intimidated by she does not like rough play so in general it's not a children's play dog like say a lab or a, a golden retriever would be yeah like they, she does when my nieces and nephews come over our nieces and nephews she will run up to them she will greet them she'll get so excited that they're there she obviously loves them and then she'll follow them around and beg for food from them and like it's clear that she likes them but then at some point she just gets really tired and she she just wants to be left alone especially now in her older age and so she'll she'll go to bed and she'll lay down under a blanket and if anyone if a, if a child bothers her she'll she'll even growl she just, she doesn't want to be bothered. She wants to be left alone. Easily irritable dog when it comes to the children's energy. Yeah, so once there she's done being chased and running after the kids in the backyard and she just wants to sleep, it's like you need to leave them alone. And so what we've taught our nieces and nephews is once Bambi goes to sleep, leave her alone, don't go in that room, give her some quiet time. So if you are able to implement that sort of system with your own children, if they're old enough and mature enough to understand that, that could be fine. Uh, but if you have really young children that won't understand that, like toddlers or really active children, it could become um, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And in conclusion, therein lies the pros and cons about the Italian Greyhound. My personal take on it, we are now on our nice homestead 12, uh, 10 acre hobby farm. Bambi is a perfect little house and apartment dog in the city. Uh, she is no farm dog. She has no farm dog. Yeah, she obviously she, as we explained in this video, she can't go outside most of the year and she certainly can't defend the farm, but we love her. We have loved having her these last 12 years. We wouldn't switch her out for any other dog in the world. And uh, we don't know how much more time we have with her, but we, we're gonna cherish every minute of it. We have enjoyed our time that have been given with her. That's right. Yeah. And we hope if you do choose to bring an Italian Greyhound in your life, that this video was helpful to you making your decision. And reach out to us, share us your story. I wanna see it. Yeah, we'd love to see if you're interested, uh, if you've got an Italian Greyhound and brought them to your life, we'd love to see pictures. So you can send them to stephanjulia.eden at gmail.com. Or check us out on Instagram. Send us a message there. Thanks for watching.